How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood. We're going to do a special request RPG Maker Envy tutorial uh, for Tim Smith. He goes, hey quick question, I'm using Trax Lighting Plugin. I used your tutorial uh, as a guide to do my torch inventory system. I've got a common event to flip a switch torch active from off to on and the torch triggers the event which basically, I'll, I'll paraphrase for, uh, for you what this says. Basically he's, his item because uh, I recreated this event, this thing, and what's happening is he's using, uh, you know, uh, switches or uh, variables to control the player's map F, max, map X and map Y, which is causing the 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 light on an event to move. But it only cycles because it won't move event every frame of the game. It cycles the move uh, event every one to two seconds. So so it's only going to move the the light every second. So it's going to look like the light goes. Like the player's walking across, the light's going to be here, the player's going to keep moving, and then the light will pop from one location to another, and it won't really follow the player correctly. So you can't use that method. I tried to do it that way as well, uh, but it doesn't work. So uh, I found a, a little cool thing inside the manual to, to have the player's light radius grow and use the player's own light radius as like it, it, it'll increase and change color uh, so that the, the torch, it'll look like you're lighting a torch. It's the best fix that I can find with Terax lighting, so and it's the most simplest way to do it. So um, I thought I'd give you a tutorial on how to do that. So let's get started. What you're going to need to make this work, before I jump into it, let me show you what we're actually going to make and what it's going to look like to see if you're interested in doing this sort of this, this method. Um, it's really cool. Please ignore the tile set that I made that's uh, a bad re resized uh, 2003 sprite. So we got a torch. Let's use our torch. And basically, it's going to make our light radius grow as the torch gets to full light. It's going to go a number of seconds, however long you want. I'll show you how to make it whatever time you want. After the time expires, it's going to fade back down. And then you're going to return back to, to the regular small amount of visual, uh, visual light you have from the player. Um, so that's basically it. Very, very simple thing, right? You, you light a torch. It follows you perfectly. It doesn't jump. You know, it doesn't. The player doesn't move while the event just hops from here and then hops to there and then to there. And this is a simple method, and it looks pretty good actually. So let's go ahead and jump into it. What are you going to need? You're going to need an item that's going to call a, a common event. So I made a torch, just a regular item. It is consumable, I would imagine, unless you have like, I don't know. You can figure out a different method if you want to. Whatever price you want, all this stuff doesn't really matter. Animation won't matter here because we're going to call it on the common event and you probably won't be able to use this in battle anyway. So we're setting this to no scope because you don't want to have to select use the torch on this player because it wouldn't matter, right? Your whole party's going to get the light. So no scope, occasion, menu, screen, consumable, yes. It's going to call a common event of torch and we'll call it like torch on. So let's jump over to common event. We're going to need two common events. The first common event is going to be torch on. It doesn't have any trigger because it's being called from a different source, from the item. It's calling directly from the item. So you use the item, calls the common event a single time. What it's going to do, whatever animations you want to go like pop for, it's, you light up the torch so you can exclude that if you don't want it to be there. But we're going to do a plugin command with Terax Lighting. We're going to do this plugin command right here. This is going to say light radius grow however many uh, pixels in size you want the light to be. Uh, for 500 is the size you saw. And then whatever hex color code you want it to turn into. So this is like that yellow, orangish glow color. So that's the one I'm using right there. Hashtag E2 B8. 22. Okay, then we're going to do control switches. We're going to need one switch. Um, we're going to do, a, so create a new switch, uh, whatever number you want. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling it torch switch. Turn that switch on. We're done with that common event. Make another common event right next to it. Call it the torch timer because this one's going to be a parallel process common event, which means no matter what map you're on, this is going to work so you don't have to copy paste events. It's easier this way too. So, uh, this is a parallel process that's only going to happen when torch switch is on. So the switch that we turned on right here, when that turns on, this is going to happen constantly. So what's going to happen? Well, we need to set how long do we want the torch to last. So you're going to set that in a number of frames. Keep in mind, this is going to reflect the number of frames per second you're running at. So if you're running at the common 60 frames per second, then... 600 would be 10 seconds. If you have a 144 hertz monitor, you're probably going to be running at 144 frames per second. So you'll have to increase this to something like this. Uh, you'll have to do, well, well, I guess 999 is the most it's going to do in one. And then you can copy this, paste this again, and add another, you know, uh, 440 like that. So this will be 441. So that'll be 10 seconds, right? Let me see, uh, 44, yeah, so that'll be 10 seconds at 144 hertz. But anyway, 
you can add as many wait commands as you want because it's a parallel process. It's not going to lock up your player. It's going to run in the background on the side. And so this is the timer. How long do you want the torch to last? Very simple. Then to turn off the torch after the timer event, it's important that this plugin command comes after the wait. Otherwise, it'll go full and come back down real fast. Then you do a plugin command. This one's very similar. You just do the same plugin command except you put the number uh, of the lighting to a, a smaller number. Actually, you set it to the same number that's in your... Uh, parameters of the plugin. We're gonna look at the plugin next because there's another tricky thing about Terax lighting that took an hour to figure out. So we're gonna set it back to the player's initial lighting. Um, you can have it the same color if you want to keep it the same color. It's up to you, whatever hex color code you want and whatever size of the lighting you want. But you just use light, radius, grow, the number of size of the radius, and then the color you want it to be. Then to turn off this whole event, because it's gonna keep running, it's gonna run it again. Uh, if you don't turn off, so we're going to turn off the switch that's controlling this parallel process. So we're going to use an item, it's turning on this switch, this parallel process runs, it waits for a certain number of frames, it puts the light back to where it is, and it turns the switch off, and voila, you're done with that. So, once we've got that, um, that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, a couple more things. Uh, in order for the script to run on the map, you have to have an event that's actually activating this, the, the Terex lighting script on that map. So somewhere on that map, you have to have a lighting source. So you do this, uh, you create a new event. Uh, here's where the transfer event is happening. So I'm, I'm saying this is where we're coming in from outside. So there's probably going to be a light source from the door, right? From the, the hole in the cave or whatever. So I'm putting a light source right here. A new event, just put it below characters, above characters, doesn't matter. It doesn't need anything in the contents. It doesn't need an image. You can make it a torch if you want, though, like a different lighting. You're just going to do, you're gonna do light. Whatever radius you want, it doesn't really matter on the radius of this. And then you can give it whatever color you want. The same thing is here. But but just by putting this event on the map, it's going to start the the, the script so that the, all of the other things will happen. The players will have a light radius. It will be dimmed out. If you don't include this event, it probably won't work. So finally, the plugin has to be, depending on what plugins you have, the location of this plugin will cause some fucking problems. It's going to cause some problems. So I've tried moving this plugin around. I originally had it somewhere in here. Uh, it didn't work right. I didn't know why. And I tried like a different, like a hundred different methods I could think of. Well, not a hundred, but I tried a, a dozen different methods to try to get this to work using region codes and using a parallel process events to move, move events. And none of that was working right. Uh, it, it's just a bad method to go about. I even moved it up to the top and it didn't work because one of these plugins that I have, you may not have this problem, but one of these plugins, some of you will, uh, one of the plugins that I'm using and probably you might be using, uh, is overriding some function in the Terex lighting. Okay, so what you need to do is have Terex lighting have the final say. So move Terex lighting to the bottom, and any any plugin that's modifying any of the stuff, Terex lighting is going to say, no, do this with it. Don't do that, do this with it. Coinc uh, consequently, uh, this could cause problems with another plugin that affects the same functions and methods. So this could mess up a different plugin, um, but I haven't had any problems with it yet. So what I did is moved it all the way to the bottom and say, Terex Lighting, you get the final say on what happens with these methods. And it works fine like that. So uh, that's how, what I would recommend. Move Terex Lighting to the bottom, give it the final say, and let's look at the parameters real quick. The player uh, radius is set to right here. How big of a light radius do you want to, the player to have? I forgot what it is. It's 300 by default. I made it 150, so the player's light is very restricted in these dark caves, but they have the ability to use a torch, which is huge. It's a big lighting, 500. So I cut this down and gave a torch that gives more than 300. So instead of just having the 300, uh, you know, you have a 150 or 500, and it'll go back and forth between those two. You can change it to your whatever you want. Change all the plugin parameters to be whatever you want. Make sure that you have the screen size X and the screen size Y set to your game's resolution, or it's going to look funky. It's going to look really messed up. So uh, other than that, everything should be fine. I think kill switch uh, has to be off uh, for... Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, kill switch could be set to yes or no, or ABCD. Uh, I'm not sure if, if that even matters for this method. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, that's going to give you that uh, torch light that you're looking for, uh, Tim, uh, Tim Smith. So yeah, we'll take a look at that one, one more time real quick. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like this tutorial. 
Thank you guys so much for supporting me on Patreon. That's why these tutorials are still going on because of you, uh, you backers. You're gonna get one special request or you know whatever tutorial I feel like doing or you know people are demanding uh, every week. And we're very close to the second goal. If uh, we get a few more Patreon backers, we might be getting two of these videos a week. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or entertaining. And subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got lots of tutorials. Check it out. I've got hundreds of them. It's it's ridiculous. I don't know why I went so hard on it, but I did. Um, I've got uh, also Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials that I'll be doing once a week. So that'll probably come out tomorrow, a tutorial for Game Maker Studio 2, as well as the first impressions, at least one a week. But, you know, you guys know what's up. There's going to be a lot of first impressions because that's what you guys want to see. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.